And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm Mike Harrison, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I want to thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, we are a real estate educational and mentoring group. We were founded 32 years ago by Dell Walmsley, and Dell Walmsley's sole mission in life is to retire one person at a time, utilizing cash flowing real estate. Essentially, we will teach you how to buy your life back one piece at a time, one real estate asset that cash flows at a time. That might be enough cash flow to pay your electric bill, for instance. And the second one might be enough to pay your car note. And the third one might be enough to pay your groceries, so on and so on. We call that chunking. And we teach you to buy your life back one piece at a time, creating that passive income. We have members in all 50 states, over 50,000 members, if you can imagine that. And we teach that financial freedom is a financial condition. It's not an age. It is a condition. If you want to be retired, if you want to be financially free, well, then if you, you have to have the money coming in to do that. You don't save a bag of money and then pull off of that bag of money and hope that you don't run out of money. So financial freedom is indeed a financial condition. It's not an age. And by the way, we're so good at what we do. One of our members has won the Independent Rental Owner of the Year from the National Apartment Association 16 of the last 16 years in a row. What am I talking about? Well, the National Apartment Association looks at all the independent rental owner little apartment communities all over America. Every city in America has apartment communities, big, small, large. They're everywhere. If you dr Whatever town you're driving through, you will see them. They're there, and those are owned typically by individuals just like us. In fact, 70% of them are owned by everyday mom-and-pop people just like myself. We own these little apartment communities. Well, the National Apartment Association looks at those and says, what are the best-run properties in this country? And then they award that property. And by the way, we've won it 16 of the last 16 years in a row. That's how good we are. Now, who am I? I'm a real estate investor in both single family properties and apartment communities. I have been a real estate investor for 12 years now. It has gone by so fast, I can't tell you. But I was lucky enough to discover Lifestyles Unlimited in 2013. And it was there that I learned how to invest in real estate effectively. And it was there that I began purchasing and managing real estate properties. Today, I manage a seven figure portfolio of real estate. I'm more successful than I ever imagined. But I need to share something with you. This year alone, I have made more real estate profit than I had accumulated in my IRA and my 401k in 25 years. Let that sink in. Think about it. More this year alone, and this year isn't over with, than I had accumulated in my 401k and IRA in 25 years. Now, I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm telling you that for a reason. We're going to craft today's show around that. I didn't start with much, honestly. I know people that are much more successful at real estate investing than I am. Hundreds of people. I still have a long way to go. I still have much to learn. But what made the difference? I'll tell you what made the difference. Letting go of the pain and the anxiety, having faith in a plan, and taking action. Regardless of what others were doing, I went a different direction. Let's borrow a term from the military. They have a term called course correct. And that's what I did. I was on a certain course for what I thought was the proper way to retire. I course corrected. I moved to real estate and embrace. And in doing so, there was a pain. There was a pain of change. In order to begin that new path that I was on, there was a pain of change. But what was the difference? Future gain for me was the mission. Future gain. The bottom line for me, I accepted there would be the pain of this new path in life. But my desire for a bigger, brighter future 
was stronger than the fear and anxiety of the pain. That's what I want to talk about. My desire for a brighter future was stronger than the fear and the anxiety of the pain. That's what today's show is going to be. I, I have two statements, and we'll work around these two statements for the remainder of the show. I hope you can stick with me. Statement one, people will, will run from pain, but they will only crawl to gain. If you can even get them to move toward gain at all, they will go at a minuscule pace, a monotonously slow pace, if you can even get them to move. But if there's any fear of pain, like, hey, you're about to get burned, they will run as fast as they can. They will react immediately. But if you say, hey, if you take this path in life and take these steps forward in three years, five years, you will be here. You're lucky if you can even get them to move. Why? Anxiety will trump hope every time. Those are both true statements. Pain is the motivating factor, not gain. There's a writer, Jordan Peterson, if you have a chance to read any of his books, I recommend you do, do so. He's, he's a great writer, but he has a quote and he says, we feel more negative about the loss of a given size than we feel good about the same size gain. Pain is more potent than pleasure and anxiety more than hope. And let me tell you what, that applies to real estate investing. That applies to getting people to begin a path of real estate investing. I'm Mike Harrison. If you have any questions about real estate investing, how to get started, Lifestyles Unlimited, whatever you may have, please send them to me. My email address is askmike at luinc.com, askmike at luinc.com. This show is but one part of the Lifestyles Unlimited radio Network. This show is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, but there's a second show that complements the entire network, and that's the Dell Walmsley Radio Show. So both shows are part of the network. We're adding radio stations weekly across the United States. Our audience continues to grow, and we appreciate you joining us. Now, if you miss this show in any part and you'd like to go back and find it, there's three different ways you can do that. You can find us on YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in Lifestyles Unlimited, type in Mike Harrison. You'll find all kinds of information on that channel, not just the radio shows. Your favorite podcast app, naturally, Lifestyles Unlimited, the website. You can go to lifestylesunlimited.com. Oh, there's a fourth way, actually. You can live stream us on your favorite radio station. If you're not in your local network area, but you know the show's running on a certain station at a certain time, wherever you are, as long as you have internet, Go to that show's website, and you can listen right there. It, it'll say, listen now. You just click the button, and boom. So no matter where you are in the world, if you know the show's on at a certain radio station at a certain time, you can definitely find us. So, again, I appreciate you joining us and just wanted to let you know the various ways that you can consume your, your real estate investing education through Lifestyles Unlimited. Today we're talking how people will run from pain but will crawl to gain, if you can even get them to move in that direction at all. And, and where I'm going is, I have a lot of examples today, but how many people have tried real estate investing once upon a time in their life, and, and because of that poor experience and outcome, they're never going to try real estate again? If you ask them, they go, oh, we tried that back in 1988. Let me tell you about it. Well, there's millions of those people out there. But even when you point out and you say, well, did you do this? Did you do this? Why would you do it that way? And you start pointing out certain items that they could have changed or done differently or more effectively to create a more positive outcome. Even when you, when you point that out, there's so many of those people, they're like, Harrison, we tried it. There's no way we're going back to that. And it's just that, again, that fear of the pain rather than the hope of the gain. That's what they're concerned about. And then there's an entirely different group of people. These are people that have never invested in real estate, but they've heard that story, right? Their friend's friend or their friend's uncle or their uncle or their cousin or their neighbor. But those stories are out there and it's the taxes, tenants, toilets, the terrible real estate investing experience that that went poorly. And it went poorly because they didn't do it properly. They didn't do it the way we teach it. But again, there's millions of those people that will not invest in real estate. Now, what are those people investing in? They're, they're putting their money in the stock market. Why? 
herd mentality. Everyone else is doing it, right? They're doing it. I'm doing it. There's safety in numbers. Look, I get it. That is human nature. It is a natural defense mechanism that has been ingrained in us. It is in our DNA because tens of thousands of years ago, we weren't the top of the food chain like we are today. That was back when you'd wake up every morning and your head was on a swivel and you'd look around. Why? Because something out there was going to eat you. So there was safety in numbers. It's the herd mentality. So these that same mentality is ingrained in us and they'll invest in the stock market. Why? Because every body else is doing it. It's all about the fear of loss is greater than essentially the hope of gain. They the the anxiety, if they were to get out of the stock market, they're constantly going to worry about it, but they're not worried about the stock market crash. It's funny. Stock market goes down a thousand points and everybody looks at each other and like, well, stock market's down today. I lost X amount. And really it's it's mind blowing to me because now that I'm on this other side, I can see it so much more clearly. I'm excited when I get into a real estate investment because I've done all the analysis. I've eliminated the bad decisions. I've said no to this property, no to that property, no to that property, no to that property. And then finally I find the one and the math makes sense. And I go, bingo, we're going in this one. I'm excited about it. And that is the hope of gain that I know is going to be there. Now, Let's talk more about that negative loss of, of any given size. And, and this is an, actually an example from, from my life. Prior to Lifestyles Unlimited, I purchased my first rental property, and I did it in an IRA, okay? So essentially, I converted funds within a self-directed IRA to purchase the home, okay? Dollars were exchanged for home, but the IRA remained intact, okay? The value never changed. I never pulled from the IRA, okay? So follow me. And at the time, my wife, really, she wasn't that concerned, okay? She believed in, in what I was doing, but, you know, the IRA had a value of X. We exchanged dollars for house. It still had the value of X. It was just in the form of the house. My, my wife really didn't mind. Mentally to her... And I guess to a big point to myself, there was no loss, okay? There was no anxiety. I didn't pull any money out of that IRA. So the account value really didn't change. But let's go forward when I became wise and I started cashing out my IRAs and my 401k money to buy rental properties. That was serious. That was real. There was a lot of discussion that led up to that. There was a lot of anxiety to it. There was even anxiety at the time I pulled, but I'm so glad I did it. Paid the penalty, paid the taxes. I am free. Those dollars are mine. That was the best decision I ever met. But if we go back to that time, was my wife concerned? Yes. Was I concerned? Yes, I was, but I knew what I was doing. But that is a huge holdup for millions of people out there. They have the money to invest in real estate but they're not going to pull it from their IRA and they're not going to pull it from their 401k because the moment they do that, they don't see that they exchange dollar for brick, mortar, counter, flooring, that that dollar just took a different form in the form of a positive cash flowing tangible asset. No, to them, it's it's a loss. OK, they see pulling one hundred thousand dollars out of their IRA or their 401k. Well, that IRA, that 400 401k is now worth one hundred thousand dollars less. And I go, no. Your wealth is still the same. In fact, it's growing faster because you exchange those dollars into that real estate asset. But people will, that they feel more negative about the perceived loss than the positivity of the gain. Okay. So that's a huge example and that's a huge hurdle for a lot of people. They just won't pull from those funds. IRAs and 401s are sacred and to them pulling's a loss, that 10% penalty, which is a joke. That's a tip. Okay. That's nothing. We double our money every three to four years in real estate. When you invest it properly, you're doubling it every three to four years. Yet that fear of a loss, the mentality of seeing that 401k statement, $100,000 less or $200,000 less, but they're not putting that side by side with essentially 
their entire real estate portfolio where I can show them, hey, your wealth actually grew, or if nothing else, it's the same, just in a different form. My name is Mike Harrison. We'll continue it on the other side. You're listening to Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. For 30 years, I've taken the smartest people I could find and then held them up as examples for you guys to learn from. We're all only as strong as our best people. But the best part about this is that these best people are willing to give back. Ready to learn from the best? It starts with our free online workshop. Stop depending on your paycheck. Quit worrying about retirement. Register now at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, where, as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I'm Mike Harrison. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or you would like to learn more about real estate investing or Lifestyles Unlimited, my email address is askmike at luinc.com. Now, you may be listening. You may say, Harrison, I'm very interested. How can I learn more about real estate investing and Lifestyles Unlimited? Well, that's super easy. Go to free workshoplivestream.com free workshop livestream.com you can schedule to join that live stream and learn how we make money five ways on a single family property six ways on an apartment community there's several different times but you'll need to go to that free workshop livestream.com and if you'd like to join that's financial freedom livestream.com financial freedom livestream Dot com. If you use promo code save big S A V E B I G all capital letters, if you put that in the promo code box, it'll reduce that price from seven hundred and forty dollars to two hundred and ninety seven years for two years of financial freedom. And then you can join us, you can attend our, our workshop, our seminar, our case studies, and you can begin your real estate investing path like I did twelve years ago. Today we're talking how people will run from pain but crawl to gain. The fear of pain far outweighs the hope of any gain. And it, it's a human mentality. It's a true statement. So fear is is much more of a motivating factor than success on the other side. And, and I think it's part of that herd mentality that's been ingrained in us as humans for thousands upon thousands of years. Well, times have changed. We're the top of the food chain. There's no reason to be afraid. Get educated, make effective decisions, and change your life. And the other statement that I want to throw out is anxiety will trump hope every time. People will just chew on that anxiety, and they won't forget it. I'll I'll give you another example. I had a friend lose her job three years ago. Okay, now she has a new job now. It's, It's actually much better company, much better culture. She makes almost twice as much money as she made back then at that other job. But every now and then we'll get in a discussion and I can see it. it it'll come out the anger over the way she essentially corporate America removed her. I mean, just pure unadulterated fury deep inside there. And I say, hey, you're happier now you make more money now it's a different culture and she says i don't care they should have never done that to me and i tell her hey corporate america is good until the day they're not she'll say they should have never done that to me and i agree but but there it is it's that human nature what is she doing she's dwelling on that loss instead of recognizing the gain she had to go through that to, she's better today, much better. And the same thing, I, I see the same thing in folks that leave that conventional world of go to school, get good grades, go to college, get that job and feed that 401k. I see that same anxiety in people that will diverse, they'll, they'll divest from that path, right? They'll take a different path. And there's a lot of anxiety in that or or even kids that think about the pressure to go to college today. It is just there. And I will tell you, I know more millionaires 
that did not go to college than millionaires that did go to college. That is an absolute true statement. Salt of the earth, everyday people making great money out there. And look, there's some college millionaires, okay? I'm not saying college is is all bad and not going to college is all good. There's a mixture, but I will tell you, college isn't for everybody. And if you think you're going to college to make more money, you can make more money several different ways, and it doesn't always have to involve college. Getting out of college basically just says you can learn and follow directions. That's all it really does. Sometimes it teaches you an effective skill set. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, here's another example of people that have that fear of the loss rather than the hope of the gain. And I, I see this sometimes in first-time uh, first time rental owners, but also it's out there in slumlords. And we're not slumlords, okay? We are property owners. We appreciate our property. We have a philosophy of best product, best price. We appreciate the resident. We, we create a great, clean, and functional place to live. But you have these slumlords that won't spend any money on their property. Or you have that first time person that buys that property and they're nickel and diming the rehab. Now, we have a budget, but when something needs to be done, take care of it, do it. But they just, well, that's gonna be $2,500. And, and I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is a $175,000 house. Let's fix it, let's move on. This is gonna be a reoccurring problem for you, but they're gonna dwell on that. And, and then again, I look at it as, I'm not necessarily spending the $2,500. I am changing those dollars into that asset, right? I'm exchanging it into it. For instance, if you need to get a new air conditioner, that's three to five grand, easy. But you can't dwell on that, oh, I just spent three to five grand. You gotta, you gotta just do it. Or someone gets in and, and there's the unexpected issue during rehab, something that was maybe missed or discovered during the rehab termites, an electrical issue, maybe a roof leak. Not all, all roof leaks are make themselves aware. You, you find out after the hard rain, gee, my roof looks great, but it's leaking. And so you might have that. Look, don't harp on the quote unquote loss of fixing that, except that what you're doing is making that property better and realize that you're going to gain as you move on. So get over it. Don't nickel and dime. Fix what needs to be fixed. Spend the money if you have to spend it. Another example, I spent a couple of days with a friend of mine uh, a few weeks back, and he had lived internationally and then lived in New York City for a few years. And he shared some stuff that was pretty close to him with me. And um, he and his wife were having some debt issues and had just started on the Dave Ramsey plan, which I agree with that plan to get out of debt. After that, you need to come to us and we'll show you how to grow your wealth. And it's not by not borrowing. It's it's absolutely borrowing, but there's there's a lot more to it. But he was he had just embarked on this Dave Ramsey plan and uh, his wife wasn't happy with the situation, I guess. There was there was pain there for her, and they were struggling. Um, she didn't like the fact that they just couldn't go out uh, to dinner whenever they wanted and, and put it on the credit card, or if there was some knickknack for the house, or if she wanted to redo one of the rooms in the house. They're trying to have this strict financial budget to get out of debt, and I don't. She, obviously, she wasn't a hundred percent on board. I, I got the feeling she was fifty-fifty. And that's what my friend was sharing with me. But essentially what it was, she's running from the pain, okay? She is running from the fear of the loss, the pain of not having the ability to just every now, hey, here's what I want to do. I'm going to put it on the card. It is what it is. That was that instantaneous gratification side of it. Instead of saying, hey, in two short years, if we embrace this pain, if we accept the change, if we accept what we're going to have to go through so that we can come out on the other side so much better and then develop a wealth plan, that there it is. People will crawl to gain if you can even get them to move at all. But they're going to run from the pain. 
I mean, literally, she she just she's not on board. She doesn't want to have it. He's struggling. He loves her. They they have a great relationship. Don't get me wrong. They've been married for several several years, but she's she's running from the fact that I can't do this when I want to, or maybe I can't have the girls weekend when I want to, or maybe we can't do that. That instantaneous gratification side. Instead of saying, "Hey, we're going to swallow this pill. It's going to hurt for a couple of years. It's going to be tight." We're going to do without, but on the other side, we're going to have gained so much, and we're going to be better off financially. I'm Mike Harrison. I want to take a moment and share with you that the dates for our Wealth and Passive Income Expo and Master's Tour have been set, and that's going to be February 15th through 18th in 2023. So next year, next February 15th through 18th, it's going to be in Irving, Texas. We're coming back to Irving. We were in Irving two years ago. Great venue. It's at that Toyota Music Factory venue there in Irving. Fantastic. Great hotels, great restaurants all around. It's a really, really fun fun time. There'll be over 6,000 real estate investors, like-minded real estate investors from all over the country here at the Expo. Great event. Now, what do we do at the Expo? We have a lot of uh, uh, breakout and educational classes throughout, I, I believe over 35. So you've got a few days and you kind of pick and choose what class you want to go to. And you could pick those classes based on your real estate investing strategy. You can go to the single family classes. If you're a passive investor in multifamily communities, you can go to those classes. If you want to be a lead investor or you are a lead investor, there will be classes for those people. So whatever your real estate path is, you can go to those classes. There'll be case studies. You can meet people that are investing in real estate all over this country and share those experiences and network. Great time. So I recommend that you go ahead and save the date, February 15th through 18th, 2023, Irving, Texas. Now, today we're talking how people will run from pain, but will barely crawl to gain if you can even get them to move at all. Even if they understand like, hey, if we go forward on this path, we're going to be much better off, but it's that the fear, like, well, what sort of pain am I going to have for this year or that year? And I was sharing an example, a uh, friend of mine, and they're trying to get out of debt. And as a couple, they're they're both not necessarily, they both haven't felt the pain enough of being in debt uh, is not greater than the pain of not being able to have that dinner or not be able to take those little two or three day vacations or not be able to get the new shoes or, or, or what have you. So that part is, is essentially greater to them. That, that feeling that instantaneous gratification, so to speak is greater than maybe dealing with a little pain, bit of pain and embracing that pain in order to have a really large gain on the other side. And, and I see it everywhere. When you're looking for it, you'll see it today. Now, two points I want to go back to, um, but I want to go a little deeper. I want to talk about that first real estate investment, that the person that says, okay, I'm going to jump into this. What do I need to do? What am I looking at to make that first uh, investment? And, and let's compare that. Let's say that person is a diehard 401k investor, like, like I was uh, for a couple of decades I was, and it was always just that money coming out of your paycheck and going into the 401k. And that's all being reinforced by your coworkers, by your boss, by your peers, by your neighbors, by your family. That's what we do. You're putting that money in there because one day it's going to be a certain sum. And when it's a certain sum, then your mind will say, oh, we have enough. We can now retire. But let's look at somebody who says, okay, Let's give it a shot. What do I need to do to get that first property? And let's say uh, we can kind of look at both at the same time. You know, if you're going to get that first rental home, it's going to be thirty-five to fifty thousand dollars out of pocket here in Dallas Fort Worth. It's probably much different in the market that you're in, but that's just the numbers here. We we'll use that as an example, and let's maybe use that passive. uh, Let's say someone wants to invest passively in an apartment community, that would be fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. But taking that rental home, that first rental home, what 
at the end of buying the rental property, getting educated, buying the rental property, and we, we suggest you buy distressed property, so you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to fix everything in the property. You don't do it. You have people that do it. But it, moving forward, what do you get at the end of three months? We've, we've taken this property. We've gone through. We've purchased it. We took the money, and we bought it. What's the gain? Well, to that person, that instantaneous gratification person, I'm going to tell them, well, your gain is $400 a month on average. And if you're doing that first passive investment of fifty dollars to $100,000, how much are you going to make after year one and year two? Well, you'll probably get four to 6000 in cash flow. For a lot of people, those numbers just don't move them, right? That, hey, what am I going to get after I spend 35000 and go through the process around $400 a month? That just doesn't pop. Right. You know what I'm saying? 400 for people that are making decent income in a W-2 world that are feeding that 401k, 401k, 401k. And they, they just see it. And it's not enough. It doesn't give their brain that dopamine rush. OK. And there's a lot of that with social media and, and all this. So I'd, I'd explain to them that, hey, there is so much more gain than that 400 a month. But that's the tangible side of it we make money five ways on it the four hundred dollars a month is is just the cash flow you're also getting mortgage pay down when the resident pays the rent you take and you pay all the bills associated what we call piti principal interest taxes insurance the rest there is is the leftover side the cash flow that's the 400 a month but you also have that mortgage pay down now when you buy the distressed property you just made an equity capture so there's 15, 20, 25, maybe much more than that in that property. What else is going on in the background? The appreciation of the property, the entire property is appreciating, even though you only have a small portion of your money in it, and, and that's happening. But it's all in the background, and it doesn't give many individuals just – they they can't justify the experience of what they're going through to begin investing in real estate for that $400 a month. But it's it's the start right there. It's the start, okay? I had a buddy one time. This was uh, the dot-com. He's a hunting buddy. We used to go goose hunting all the time, and he did well. Um, he, he had a, a good business, and right time of the year, it, there was a lot of money coming in. This guy put an, an Amex card, called his stockbroker, and bought $50,000 of Qualcomm stock. And this was right around 1999, okay? But in his mind... That was a rush. That was that big pop. That was that dopamine. Hey, Qualcomm is is the stock market. The tech bubble is going, going, going. They didn't know it was a bubble at the time, um, but everything is going up in the in uh, the investing. If you're investing in any sort of internet or technology stocks, they're just growing and they're doubling, and everything's going up. And so he took out the Amex card. Now Amex, it's due next month. The bill is due next month. You're not carrying a balance on your Amex card. It, you pay it each and every month. And so he put $50,000, and this was just before the meltdown. I believe three or four months later is when the market melted down. This had to be fall of 99 because we were on a hunting trip. Um, and, and the market, if I remember, it was like eh, March of 2000, something like that. But anyway, it was in the spring when the market crashed. So a few months later, I always wonder – what happened to that fifty thousand dollars? But he got the dopamine rush. He got the big pot. Hey, I'm gonna put fifty k, and in a few months it'll be worth a hundred k. It's gambling. I get it, and and maybe that's the attraction to gambling. But those same people, if you had taken fifty thousand dollars and put it in a rent home, what are you gonna get? Uh, in three months, you should be cash flowing at about four hundred dollars a month. And it, back then, when it, actually when I started investing, it was it was over five hundred. It's a little lower now, but it's still just that process. It's not giving them that big kick. And again, a lot of people just won't pull that money out and use it because can you imagine putting fifty grand on an Amex card to buy a rent house? I'm not saying that's not a bad idea if, if you can pay it off and you've got money elsewhere to do it. But I would tell you that three years, five years later, if you've owned rental properties like I have, you're making huge returns. I had one I sold last year and it was a six figures that came back to me on a property. So it, it took a while. And at the time when I bought it, I didn't see that in there. But for me, I knew there was gain 
at the end. Okay. So I didn't mind the pain of spending the money on the rental property to go get the gain. I, I hope you're following. If, if somebody has a hundred thousand dollars, what are most people, are they going to go invested in real estate? I know I would, but most people out there know they see it in their account that makes them feel good. And then they start having the visions of the new car, the new truck, the vacation, and if you said no, use that money and go buy a rental property. They, they, they don't see it as buy. Okay, there's difference. Buying a rental property is a conversion of your money from dollars, physical, tangible dollars, into physical brick, mortar, flooring, a roof. It's a tangible asset. It's a house. Okay, but they they see it as spending. I'm down a hundred grand, and so in their mind, the the pain of quote unquote losing the hundred grand, you're not losing it, but spending it, it's going away, it's going somewhere else. I don't have it. I don't see it in my account. There is that that pain of change that's just quite frankly going to stop somebody from doing it. It's going to stop them in their tracks, and it's herd mentality. People will much rather run from pain than move even a smidgen toward gain. And it's out there. It's out there. I encourage people that when they begin investing in real estate, stop feeding your 401k at a minimum. Now, for most people, that's an easy step, okay? It's still hard for others, but that's an easy step. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if you're still working, why don't you borrow from your 401k. You can take thirty to $50,000, depending on what your balance is, and you can invest that. But that's going to stop some people. And ultimately, I'm going to ask you to cash it out, and that's going to stop some people. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security. 